In Seoul, Dr. Gaisu is doing bizarre animal experiments in order to cure his daughter, who is only a lie because of her father's devices. Mutated animals run rampant throughout the lab, while Gaisu murders his assistant to silence him and use him to test his latest drug. At that point, the authorities storm into the lab to arrest him for killing over a hundred people with his experiments, and as Gaisu injects himself with his serum to demonstrate that he has made a significant discovery, he is shot down. Suddenly, an earthquake hits the location causing the entire room to shake. Outside, all of the city's buildings begin to collapse, and the lab soon follows. The officials instantly flee to save themselves, while Gaisu remains to defend his daughter. The earthquake finally destroys the entire area, leaving behind a bleak wasteland where the metropolis once stood. People begin to live in small settlements, hunting for few resources. Water is particularly problematic because it rarely rains. Leaving the settlements is a bad idea because there are desperate individuals out there eager to kill for food, so only a few armed men venture out to hunt. Three years after the earthquake, Ju Wan is out seeking for something to shoot with his bow. He hears a growling noise and discovers a crocodile, so he hides behind a car and ignites his arrow on fire before shooting the beast in the head. The crocodile squirms in pain for a few seconds before collapsing. Ji Wan rushes to recover his prey, but the crocodile suddenly awakens and pursues him. Ji Wan's usual arrows cannot penetrate the crocodile's skin, so he rushes inside the car, only for the crocodile to insert its head through the glass and attempt to bite him. Nam San then pulls the beast back and rapidly decapitates the crocodile with a machete. The males then carry the crocodile back to their hamlet, where they cut it into little flesh bits and trade them for other necessities. Suna and her grandma Yinsu arrive to pick up some meat, and Ji Wan attempts to flirt with the girl but is unsuccessful. A violent gang arrives in an ugly automobile and crashes into someone's tent, abruptly disrupting the peaceful morning. The gang members explain that they are hunting for a criminal and display a really terrible drawing, but no one knows anything. The thieves decide to capture random peasants who they believe resemble the painting, prompting a guy to attempt to protect himself. He takes the gangster by the neck, only to have another criminal slit his arm, forcing him to drop his friend. The gangster then tries to hit on Suna, but when she refuses, he pulls her hair and slams Yensu to the ground. Ji Wan quickly comes to their aid, and a brawl starts. He knocks down the first guy, but the rest of the gang quickly surrounds him and begins beating him up simultaneously. Nam San eventually gets weary of watching and breaks in, effortlessly beating up all of the crooks in a few movements. A short guy tries to injure his leg, but Nam San considers it a tickle. Then a guy tries to strike him with a pipe, so Nam San easily overpowers him and tosses him onto his meat table, demanding answers. The thug reveals that they work for a man named Tiger, a name Nam San recognizes. He also notes that the gangsters have clean water, which they claim came from the lone apartment building left surviving, where a group of survivors has established a flourishing, self-sufficient society. When the criminals hear Nam San's name, they recognize him and rush away. A gang of well-dressed recruiters eventually arrives in the area. They arrive from the apartment complex and are hunting for families with teenagers to protect since children are the future. Suna only agrees to leave for the sake of her grandmother. By nightfall, Suna and Yinsu are still strolling toward the apartment complex with the recruiters. When they notice someone moving in the dark, they rush to hide, but by sending a message with their lamp, they confirm that it is another recruiter. Both groups continue to travel together, and Suna befriends Ju Yi, a girl from another hamlet. Yin Su eventually loses her ability to walk and falls, as does another child's elderly father. A recruiter indicates that there is a medical station nearby where the elderly can relax before being transported to the apartment building later. Just a few minutes later, the gang notices a few cars waiting for them, which confuses Suna because if these vehicles had always been so close, they could have simply transported the elderly here. Sergeant Quan dismisses her comments, and Suna observes an unusual wart behind his ear. Meanwhile, Yen Su and the old man are led to a gap created by the earthquake, where the old man is thrown off the edge and Yen Su is stabbed. This is noticed by Nam San and Ji Wan, who are out hunting. As soon as the recruiters hear them, they open fire, but Nam San runs quickly and kills them both in seconds, but to his surprise, both guys simply stand back up and attack him. <coughs> Okay. 
Ji Wan draws an enemy's attention by fleeing and causing him to bash his skull on cement when he attempts to apprehend him, yet the man is still alive. It is then found that these men likewise have the wart behind their ears. Ju Wan, with a strategy in mind, continues to fight and convinces his opponent to walk right into one of his animal traps, catching him. However, the guy simply uses a knife to free his foot and pursues Ji Wan again, but just as he is about to kill him, he is pulled down by Yun Ho, who eventually kills the guy for good by decapitating him. Meanwhile, Nam San continues to fight the other guy and impales him with a metal rod, but the man simply jumps off and attacks Nam San from behind. Unho tosses a knife at him to slow him down, and Nam San uses the same knife to decapitate him. Ju Wan and Nam San then properly bury Yin Su, and Yun Ho reveals that she is trying to reach the apartment complex in order to save the tenants and her subordinates. She used to be in the Air Force, and her crew would fly over the area to rescue any survivors of the earthquake. When they discovered the only building that hadn't collapsed, they assisted the locals in cleaning up the area and rebuilding the community. While they were working, Daisu arrived and offered his services as a doctor, but after a few days, he revealed his true colors. Parents began to report that their children would not return after Jaisu abducted them, and Ian Ho confronted him about it. However, Quan and the rest of her crew were secretly working with Gaisu, as she demonstrated by shooting a buddy. The individual rose up again, and Gaisu stated that his experiments were humanity's only hope. Enho was furious and jumped on the doctor, only to be held back by her comrades. A brawl occurred, and after knocking down a few comrades, Enho attempted to shoot Gaisu, but Quan fired first. Enho had no alternative but to jump through the window and escape. After hearing all of this, Ju Wan and Nam San agree to assist Ian Ho since they, too, want to rescue Suna, however, they will need a plan to evade security. Two gangs around the ruins of a building are forcing residents to fight to the death for fun and gambling, threatening to kill their loved ones if they do not comply. After another match ends in death, Leader Tiger asks the other gang if they have anything else to wager on, sparking an argument that evolves into a physical altercation. Both gangs begin killing each other mercilessly, but no one is able to lay a single hit on Tiger, who has the most blood on his hands. The criminals are killed one by one, and when there are only a few survivors, Nam San arrives with the others and asks for Tiger. Nam San and Tiger were boxing competitors, but Nam San injured Tiger so terribly that he had to retire, and now he seeks vengeance. Both gangs join forces to assault the three but Nam San and Yan Ho's training allows them to easily defeat a group of street fighters. Ji Wan also defends himself successfully and makes it to the cage, where he frees all of the captive civilians. When Nam San easily defeats Tiger in a few moves, the other criminals flee, but the squad apprehends a few so Nam San may interrogate them. He strikes them and asks where they obtained the water, prompting Tiger to admit that he is the one who makes agreements with the building's tenants. He brings them children in exchange for clean water, but he can only pass over the barrier on delivery days, so Nam Stan will need to arrange accordingly. Meanwhile, Suna's group arrives to the apartment complex and is astounded by how neatly it is structured. Guards are everywhere, solar panels provide electricity and veggies grow in a small garden. The locals welcome them warmly, and Daisu presents himself as the leader, instantly offering bottles of pure water. Suna refrains from drinking hers because she wants to save some for her grandmother. Then she is assigned an apartment, where she is surprised to find supplies, clean clothes, and running water. Suna asks about her grandma after changing, and a teacher tells her that a ride is on its way to pick her up. Then Gaisu announces which teenagers receive the best grades, and the families of the top four pupils are assigned to the loveliest apartments on the eighth floor, are excused from work, and receive a free lunch pass. However, when the teachers speak with the pupils and their families in private, it is revealed that only the children are brought to the eighth floor, while their families are sent to the basement to purify and bottle the water. They have to work long hours every day and are not permitted to visit their children again. In Gaisu's lab, Quan eats an entire mouse as the teacher tells Gaisu that Suna and Yunho are healthy and ready for the trials, so Gaisu reminds her to give them water. Afterward, the teacher presents the girls to the class, and Suna is taken aback by how all of the other teens are constantly bewildered and have a scar behind their ears. Suna becomes increasingly suspicious when the teacher begins educating them about the human body's weakness and how they must evolve to exist without water. Soon, the class becomes propaganda for Gaisu as the lone rescuer and their obligation to assist him. During lunch, everyone is handed a bottle of water, and the teacher encourages that everyone drink it, so Suna decides not to. Gaisu also appears to give them a lecture and selects Judy as his next helper. 
Suna inquires about his grandma again and is informed that she came quite poorly and will be in the medical facility for a few days. When Daisa reminds Suna to sip the water, she simply pretends. <laughs> Afterward, Jai Su tests his latest serum on Quan, who is concerned about the two agents who have yet to return. He hopes everyone to carry a serum injection with them at all times, but Gai Su gives him a hazy reason why not. After Quan leaves, it is shown that Gai Su is still striving to heal his daughter. Suna sneaks out of bed in the evening, while everyone else is sleeping, and walks around the building. When she hears them approaching, she dives over the balcony to hide in time. In the basement, the soldiers attempt to send the day workers out to bring in the night shift, but Judy's parents begin to protest because they are not permitted to see their daughter. To avert a disturbance, Gaisu arrives and invites Judy's parents to his lab, assuring they will see their child. Returning to Suna, she sneaks into Gaisu's lab and reads his notes, revealing that he has been experimenting on reptiles to create the serum due to their regenerative abilities. His first tests were performed on young persons, all of whom perished. Suna then unlocks a door and discovers Judy linked to a machine via an incision behind her ear. Suna hurries to hide just as Gaisu comes. When Judy's parents see her, they freak out, so Daisu attempts to explain that it's for her own benefit, and then he shows them how he cares for his own daughter to prove he loves children. The parents are horrified to see that just the girl's upper torso remains, and Gaisu is ruthlessly preserving her in a glass cage to keep her heart beating. Refusing to participate, the parents attempt to unhook Juhi from the machine, but this just causes her to have a seizure. Gaisu runs to aid her, but it is too late and Juhi dies. Gaisu, enraged, repeatedly stabs the father, and when the mother attempts to flee, Quan shoots her. At that point, Gaisu discovers Suna and uses her as his next test subject. While connecting her to the machine, he explains that he uses teens because their pituitary glands contain a component he need, which he converts into a serum using the water they consume every day. When he turns on the machine, Suna cries in anguish. Meanwhile, Nam San and the others come in Tiger's truck, pretending to have a delivery. The guard points out that it is not delivery day, and Tiger is unable to come up with a reason, so the troops become suspicious and investigate the rear of the truck. Nam San suddenly knocks out a guard and accelerates, ignoring the soldiers beginning fire as he drives through them and the front gate. He quickly turns the truck, bringing down the watchtower before crashing into the lobby. Tiger flees to hide as Nam San, Ju Wan, and Yun Ho start fire with the weapons they stole from the gang. <laughs> Soon, a few soldiers approach, so Anho beats them down and allows them to ascend the stairs. After blasting a lock, the trio enters an abandoned chamber, where Yunho is horrified to discover her friends in a cell. When she frees them, she sees that the troops have transformed into reptile-like zombies who attack immediately. Nam San swiftly recognizes Anho, and the guys start fire, blowing a few heads up. There are too many of them, however, and the soldiers quickly approach for a hand-to-hand -hand battle. Nam San and Ji Wan do their best to defend themselves, but Yun Ho is stunned and cannot harm her pals. Thankfully, Ji Wan yells at her and shakes her out of it, so Yun Ho leaps into action and begins decapitating zombies left and right. Working well together, the trio kills all of the soldiers, leaving no opponent standing. At that point, Gai Su says over the speakers that he will let the group lie if they leave now. Using the intercom in the cell area, Nam San responds that they will not give up and then destroys the equipment, injuring Gai Su's ear with the resultant screech. While Gai Su returns to Suna to take the serum from her body, the trio heads upstairs and blows up a door, killing all of the soldiers on the other side. Soon, backup arrives, so Nam San instructs the others to go find Suna while he takes care of things here. Then Nam San fires an extinguisher, creating a cloud of smoke that he utilizes as cover while shooting the incoming guards. When he runs out of ammo, he gets his machete and enters the corridor to kill the troops face to face, quickly chopping through them with his machete and even stealing their pistols to shoot them down. When another squad of troops approaches him, Nam San uses the dead guy's weapons to kill them all in seconds.
After that, he goes to the basement and instructs the workers to go outside and find their children. Meanwhile, Yun Ho and Ji Wan continue killing soldiers as they make their way upstairs. There are too many of them approaching, so Yun Ho stays to give cover while Ji Wan climbs. She uses her shooting and fighting abilities to defeat them all, and soon just Quan is left. She fights him hand to hand, but he's a much superior fighter, and his body has serum modifications, making him difficult to take down. After much battle, Yun Ho tries to stab him in the foot and eye, but Quan simply shows that he has lizard scales beneath his flesh to defend him. Yun Ho tries to strike again, but Quan easily overcomes her and stabs her before throwing her from the balcony. Ji Wan searches every room on the higher floors before arriving at the classroom, where he promptly kills the guard. The teacher attempts to flee, but Ji Wan kidnaps her so she can show him the way to the lab. Ji Wan also tells the students to run, but they don't even flinch. On their way out, Quan discovers Ji Wan and the instructor, but Nam San arrives and confronts the surgeon while the others flee. In the lab, Dai Su injects the new serum into his body and immediately becomes ill because Sunan did not drink the water. Warts appear on Gaisu's body as he vomits, but before he can exact retribution on Suna, Ji Wan arrives with the instructor. Gaisu distracts him by threatening Suna, while a soldier assaults Ji Wan from behind, knocking him down. Then Gaisu instructs the teacher and soldier to place his daughter in the briefcase while he gets all of the serum containing vials. Downstairs, Nam San is fighting Quan. Both of them are quite strong and constantly throw one other against various objects. Suddenly, Quan grabs Nam San, who exploits his opponent's speed and weight to toss him through the window. Quan continues to grasp onto Nam San to keep from falling, so Nam San impales his neck on the broken glass and decapitates him. While the working parents reunite with their children outside, Nam San enters the lab and uses the soldier's gun to shoot her and a teacher. Gaisu disregards the teacher's appeals for assistance and flees through the back door after throwing a grenade into the lab. Juwan rushes to the stretcher and rolls it over with Shuna on it, shielding them both from the blast. The tremendous noise awakens Enho, who is alive after all. Now that the lab is on fire, Nam Sang utilizes a door to get through the flames and help the teens. Outside the building, the people notice Gaisu attempting to flee and begin beating him up for what he did to the children. They also demolish all of the serum tubes, but they move away when they notice the doctor's face changing. Furious, Gaisu grabs a weapon and opens fire like a maniac, killing a slew of residents but mistakenly shooting his bag in the process. When medicine begins to flow out, Gaisu hurries to open it, but it is too late. His daughter is now permanently dead. He suddenly pukes since his body is deteriorating, and as the heroes arrive, Jai Su opens fire again, prompting Nam San to shoot him several times before killing him. As if to celebrate their win, the sky darkens and rain begins. Unho says she'll stay here to help the others rebuild, and Nam San and the teens start heading home. On their way back, the lads accompany Suna to her grandmother's grave, where she breaks down in tears. So, what did you think of the movie? Leave it in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you in the next video.